Welcome to our media outlet. Let's join Pastor Tim as he speaks on the subject of Moved by Thanksgiving from our sermon series, From Thoughtful to Thankful. A lot of times, but this was kind of different. She looked at me and she said, when was the last time you went before God and you just praised him for who he was? Not what he's given you. Not what he's done for you, but for who he is. And I thought, Lord, I have to reach way back for that time where I just went before God and just loved on him because he's God and he's great and he's mighty. And, and, and you know, I, I had to think about that. And I thought, man, we truly, truly, truly have to work on this true thanksgiving in our heart towards God. You know, God is looking for a church or he's looking for his children, who he calls his children, to be active. He wants active children. He doesn't want... Uh, how, many, how many have seen the change in kids just here recently in the last few years? Used to, you went outside for everything. Now they find reasons not to go outside so they can get in front of the, 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 the video games and all that. It's just a whole shift. It's a whole different mentality, and I think it's crossed over into the Christian world. Sometimes we've got, we've got to get to the place to where we're learning how to be active and, and doing the things, showing God how much we care and how much he means to us. You know, uh, my, my uh, title to this message today is Moved with Thanksgiving. When I say moved with thanksgiving, that's an action word. Uh, again, we're going to be talking action words and things where they have movement to it. And if you're truly thankful for the things God has done for you, there will be some action behind it. There'll be some movement behind that thanksgiving. And we're going to be talking about that over the next few weeks. You know, we live in a society that says, what's in it for me? Uh, how many have witnessed, don't raise your hand, how many have witnessed to somebody and told them you, what church you go to, and the first words out of their mouth is, it's almost like you're now you're being investigated. They want to know what you have to offer. They want to know what you have. They want to know what can you give me? What can you give my family? What can you do this? What kind of programs do you run? And, and I feel like sometimes I'm sitting under a lamp and they're, and they're actually interrogating me uh, when I'm just inviting them to church. It didn't used to be that way. Folks would say, well, what church you go to? And you'd tell them, they'd say, come on out and try it and see what you like. And now it's a little different. We're in a world now that everything is what's in it for me. I call it WIIFM radio. Uh, what's in it for me? You'll get that later. But I don't know about you, but there are a lot of people who tune into that, ch that channel every day because they want to know what's in it for me. And I want to get to the place where we're serving God and we're getting away from what can, I, what can God do for me? What can my church do for me? I want to get away from that in my life and get to the place, what can I do for God? What can I do for my church? What can I do to make my church better? What can I do uh, uh, to make God be pleased with me and pleased with what I'm doing? We as Christians have got to move from just being thoughtful of God's goodness, truly being to truly to be being thankful and showing that thankful heart by the actions that we take. How many know actions speak louder than words? That's an old saying, but it's very true. And I'll say it, I'll say it every week. And I and Brian Ricketts came to me and said, Man, Pastor, when you said that, it struck a chord inside of me, so deep inside of me, because it's true. You can do all the talking about God you want to do. You can do all the talking about Jesus and what he's done. Uh, but if your life doesn't back it up, people need to see action today. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. That's how he set it up. They need to see action today. You know, I feel this way. We are often uh, uh, thoughtful about God's goodness, but we're very seldom are we very truly thankful. And I hate to say that. I'm including myself in every one of these messages because God has really been working on me to where if, if I just think about it, how many know sometimes if you just think about it, it stays there? It doesn't go anywhere else. It's like when I see the, the person who's trying to cross the street. Well, I'm thoughtful of that person, and I start thinking, man, 
that would really that person really needs help to get across the street. But what moves it further than just thinking about it is the action part to pull over, get out of my car and help that person across the street. That's what I want us to get into and begin to see. God is looking for active Christians. He's looking for an active church. The world out there around us is dying and going to hell. Every Sunday I wake up and I think, Lord, how many churches are empty today because people have given up on God and all we need to do is begin to show them Jesus alive and well here on this earth through the lives that we live. Amen. Give God another hand clap of praise. When I die, it ain't going to matter, folks, how many houses I've had, how many cars I've had. None of that's going to matter how much money I got in the bank. None of that is going to make a difference. When I stand before God, he's going to look at me and he's going to ask me, what did you do? And then when I look at him and say, Lord, I did the best I could do, he's going to look at me and say, well, what? Done. Thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. It's all about doing. It's all about action. It's all about letting God uh, be blessed through our, through our giving and through what we do. There are actions that follow when someone is truly thankful. I have had people be thoughtful of things that I've done for them and remind me, hey, I remember that time you did that. But I've also had people so thankful for something I'd done for them that they did a return favor in some way, man. Isn't that nice to have that done? Now, I didn't do it for them to give me something back, but it's nice when you see somebody blessed so much that they turn around and they bless you back or they bless someone else from out of what you bless them, amen? That's how it works. Go with me, if you will. Go with me to Luke. We're going to read a very familiar story, Luke chapter 17. But I want us to learn some things from this story. Luke 17, we're going to read 11 through 19, I think, is probably where we'll stop. We're going to read about some lepers. We're going to learn a, bit, a, a little bit in this. We're going to learn a couple of things here I hope that we can take with us. Say amen if you're there. Here's what the New King James says. It says, now it happened as... He, Jesus, went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Verse 12. Then, he, then as he entered a certain village there, he met ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, let me ask you a question. Do you think they yelled pretty loud? Jesus, over here, Master, we're over here, Master, look at us, we're in need, have mercy on us, verse 14, so when he saw them, he said to them, go, show yourselves to the priest, and so it was, that as they went, they were all what, cleansed, cleansed. listen to this, and one, is that, is that a misprint in my Bible? Now, there were ten, right? Ten lepers got healed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down on his face at the feet of Jesus, giving him what? Thanks. Action. Man, he was moved into action, thanking Jesus for what he had done for him. And he was a what? A Samaritan. Now, that's important that we understand that. We're going to get to that here in a minute. Verse 17. So Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? Now, this got Jesus' attention. Julie, this got his attention. He said, did I not heal ten and only one has come back? But where are the nine? Where were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this one foreigner? Now, we can focus on the ungrateful nine. Look at your neighbor and say, I, I can't be the ungrateful nine. 
we can focus on that, and we could really, man, we could preach a whole nother message about the ungrateful nine. And this is one of the, this is the awesome thing about what God does sometimes in his word. When I read this, I'm, one, I'm a stat guy. I, I, like to, I like to put numbers together. And, and I see, Doc, I see that only 10% uh, of the people are, are thankful when I see this. This screams off the page at me that, man, 90% of the people who get blessed don't even come back and are truly thankful to God for it. Now, don't take that. It's not in the scripture. It's not right there. It says that. That's pastor saying that's how I see that. And I don't know about you, but I see it in my daily life. I'm going to talk on myself, too. I see it in my daily life. There's times I'll go through 90% of my day. God's blessing, 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 blessing. And I may go back to him for the one thing that he did when he did 5,000 things in a day. Man, that's how it works. So Jesus himself was standing there saying, man, did I not cleanse 10 and only one comes back? So we could focus on that, and, and I don't want to do that today. I want to focus on why the leper was so thankful and why we should be so thankful. Look at your neighbor and say, I need to be thankful. <laughs> we truly need to be thankful. Yes, you're sitting here today and you got a problem. Yes, you're sitting here today, and you got a sickness. Yes, you're sitting here today, and your limbs aren't moving the way you, uh, you'd like them to. Lord, mine's not either anymore like they used to. But listen to me when I tell you this today. We truly, as children of God, need to grab a hold of ourselves and understand, yes, there are problems. Yes, there are trials. Yes, there is trouble. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, we're buffeted on every hand. But guess what? We serve a God who is a good God who is still with us, and he'll never leave us or forsake us. We have to be thankful to him because of that very thing. Let me share some things that jump off the page here. There's four things I want, you, I want you to take home we need to be thankful for. Number one, be thankful that God shows up in places where we least expect him. Now, I'm going to tell you something about this story. you got to understand now, you all know that lepers could not get around the people. And that's really not the miracle in this story. The miracle in this story is Jesus, a Jew... A Jew decided to go through Samaria. Samaritans were looked upon by the Jews as dirt, as trash. They were looked upon as, you just stay away from those people. They were actually those people. The Jews did not want anything to do with the Samaritans because they had mixed culture. They, they had mixed religion. They had everything that you would ever want that was totally against God. But guess what Jesus did? Jesus showed up in a place where he was not expected to show up. He showed up right there because you know why? Jesus shows up in our unexpected places because we need him and he knows we need him in that place. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Sometimes we expect God, I, I expect God to be here because I'm like this and I'm doing this. And I, but those times when we don't expect God to show up and he shows up, my God, isn't that awesome when God shows up when he's not expected to show up and he takes care of our situation? There's been times, man, that God has shown up and done something and I look at Dean and I say, where did that come from, Doc? I was not expecting that at all. But, man, what a blessing. And that's the kind of God we serve. Jesus is that kind of Jesus. Jesus knows the need. Jesus knows the place where you need him. And Jesus knows exactly when to show up in your situation. Amen? Give God another hand clap of praise. We should be thankful that he shows up in those unexpected places. Number two, God sees us and hears our cries for mercy. Let me tell you something. I've cried out a lot of times for help. But there ain't no help around. Amen? We've all been there. 
We've all been in those places, man, where I'm crying, man, I'm dying over here, I need some help. And you call this one, or you call that one, or you do this, or you do that, and you end up empty-handed, and now here you are, you're caught without anything, trying to fix your situation by yourself. But isn't it awesome to know that we serve a God who has his ear open to us, and when we cry out to him, he hears us when we cry out. Let me tell you something. You may think your prayers is bouncing off the ceiling, or you may think your prayers are bouncing all around heaven because something hasn't happened yet. Well, I got news for you today. Grab a hold of this because he hears you when you pray. He knows exactly what you need. And guess what? God knows what the timing of that situation needs to be. And he'll take care of that need. You just keep right on praying and crying out to God because he hears you when you cry out to him. Amen. Let me tell you something. Those guys were crying out. If you would understand and know how... How, how it was to be a leper in those days. Man, they were completely. I've always wondered this, Doc. I always wondered, man, just because, just because God cleansed them and told them to go see the priest, that didn't, that didn't change their clothes. The smell. Whoa, oh, I'm going to give you a revelation now. Doc, write this down. You can preach this a thousand different ways. <laughs> that, that's our inside joke <laughs> Let, no brother revelation grab a hold of this just because God saves you doesn't mean you're cleaned up right away doesn't mean the old garments aren't still there doesn't mean the old smell still ain't there Revelation. Good preaching, Pastor. <laughs> Listen to me. These guys were crying out. I don't know about you, but I've had days here in the past few months where I've been on my face before God, crying out to him, thinking, God, are you not hearing me? Am I alone? God, where have you gone? You say this and your word says this, but it ain't happening. Where are you? What are you doing? Are you somewhere in some other planet? Are you taking care of some other earth? Have you completely forgot about your word that you made and gave? And, 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 and man, I, I've been there. I've been in that place. But I keep on crying and I keep on crying and I keep on crying. And eventually God reaches down and he takes me by with his two arms and he pulls me up real tight to him. And he says, oh, I'm hearing you when you cry. I'm just waiting on the perfect time to take care of your situation. That's the God I serve. Amen. He hears me when I cry. He hears me when I'm in trouble. He hears me when I'm screaming out to him, Lord, I need you. He hears me. And, and I love the mercy that he gives me. Number three, God delivers us and changes our hearts. Remember, this was a Samaritan. This was a person who had a lifestyle totally different than, than what the Jews lived and what Christ was teaching. This was someone who needed a change. And I don't know about you, but when God does something great, it has a tendency to reach our hearts. When it reaches our hearts, it begins to change our hearts. It conforms our hearts. Let me tell you something. We have a heart condition in the church world today. The, the church world has a serious heart condition. And when I say that, man, we need the surgeon. We need the heart surgeon, God, the heart surgeon, to come into the, to the Christian world today and start doing some heart surgery. We got some heart issues in the, in the church world today. People have their hearts set on more of the world, and they have their hearts set on more of the things of this world than they do even serving God, and their hearts are in the wrong places. We need to understand that God, we need to thank God that when he moved in and he touched us and he 
delivered us out of our situation. He didn't just fix our situation. He changed my heart. I'm a different person than I was two years ago. I'm a different person than I was a year ago. I'm a different person than I was six months ago because God keeps changing my heart. <laughs> keeps changing my heart. And it's for the better. Shaping me, molding me, making me closer to him. Closer to be in his image and his likeness. Man, when I go into a crowd and I leave a crowd, my prayer is, Lord, don't let them see Tim. Don't let them see Pastor Tim. When I leave that place, let them feel the anointing of God. Let them see Jesus when I leave. The heart of God. Man, he changes us. Aren't you thankful of that? Aren't you glad you're not who you used to be? Yeah, that's something we need to grab a hold of. Man, I need to be so thankful that I'm not who I used to be, that I need to share that with somebody else, and I need to make sure other people see who I am today. Amen? I have been changed in my heart because that's what God does. Number four. God is blessed by our actions when we move with thanksgiving. Jesus was blessed by this Samaritan. He was moved when the Samaritan came back, and it moved him. It pleased him when that Samaritan came back because he made the comment. He said, hey, I got one that came back, but didn't I, didn't I, didn't I heal ten? But I got one that came back, and he said, and he's a Samaritan. Jesus was making this point, man, this is really a blessing because not only did he come back, he was a Samaritan. Now I see that he's a changed man. He's a changed heart. See, we need to understand this part about God. When we're active and we're doing things for him and we're out there and we're helping others and we're doing, we're being Christ, we're being his hands and his feet and his voice and we're doing those things out there in the world today, God sits back on his throne throws his chest out, rubs his chest, and says, that's mine right there. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. That's what he does. <laughs> None of you in this room are going to tell me that when someone starts bragging on your kids and you see your kids doing something really, really good, that it doesn't puff your chest out. Yeah, that's my boy. I remember things, I, I, I look back at our four kids raising them and, and, and now grandkids, 100 grandkids coming through, and I look back and I, I start seeing these things and I start thinking to myself, man, the days that I was so proud of my children, those moments where you sit back and you're so proud, and you say, oh, Pastor, you can't be proud. I'm not talking about that kind of pride. I'm talking about being proud of what they have become. And you don't think God knows love a whole lot more than we do, that he doesn't sit back when we reach out and we touch that poor person or when we reach out and we give food to that hungry or, or we reach out and we touch that one that's got no clothes. We reach out and give groceries to that one that's got no groceries. You don't think God leans back on his throne and throws his chest out and says, that's my child. I'm so proud of him, and I'm so proud of her. That's how he works. See, we got to understand this thing. They, they, I know they've got all kinds of things they call it now, but I've always just said, man, whenever you get blessed, you've not gotten blessed just so you can hold on to it and keep it to yourself. You've been blessed because God expects you to bless others with your blessing. That's how he works. You say, well, I ain't got no money. You don't need money to bless people. How many know you don't need money to bless people? It's nice if you got money. You can really bless somebody if you got money. But I'm telling you now, it's all a cycle that God has set up. Bless, he blesses us. We give him glory by blessing others. He gets glory by what I do out of the blessings he's given me. I want our church to be a church that does nothing but pass on the blessings that God gives us. So that he can sit on the throne and lean back and say, that's my church. That's my people right there. You know, when God says you're his people, whew, you better grab a hold of that. You talking about being thankful. 
you better be thankful when you look up into heaven and he says, that's my child right there, because that is saying a mouthful, folks. The devil can't, devil can't deal with, uh, uh, with you whenever God looks down and says, that's my child right there. How many times do you, do you know the devil's come after you in a way and he snuck up on you, you didn't even know what was going on, and God reached down out of heaven and said, whoa, whoa, that's my child. How many of you have stood and watched your grandkids or your kids at the younger age get ready to do something and you step in and stop them from doing it? There's many times God has stopped Satan from doing evil or, or coming against us because we're his children. Right. And he loves us. I'm so thankful for that. Man, I'm so thankful for that. Let me leave you with this. This is what happens when we are thoughtful but not thankful we are displeasing to God. When you read verses 17 and 18, you're going to see Jesus was pretty upset. He made it a point to say it out loud so everybody could see how disappointed he was that he healed 10, but only one came back. So we displease God in every way when we don't move into action, when we don't give the blessings that he's given us, when we don't do the things we should be doing. We become that ungrateful nine. And I caution myself and I keep myself before God and say, God, please don't ever let me get to the place to where I become the ungrateful nine. Let me leave you with this. What are some ways we can be moved to action with thankfulness? Well, you can do it by giving to God. You can give him your time. You can give him your talents. You can give him your treasures. I like this. I said, don't just think it, do it. You know, Nike would not have got famous just by saying, just think it. Amen? And it been a whole new symbol and everything. Just think it. You can just think all you want, but if you do it, it puts things into action, and it pleases God in every way. And if you have, everybody, everybody's got this, too. You know, this is something else that amazes me about God. He doesn't ask for something that only certain people have. Everybody has time, 24 hours a day. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, we all got 24 hours. <laughs> Guess what? I don't have no more time in a day than you do. We all got the same amount of time. You know what else we always have? We all got talents. Brother, Doc, there's every person in this room has got some kind of talent. You may sit here and go, well, I just ain't found mine yet. Well, keep searching because you got a talent. God doesn't create things without talent. They have talent. You have a talent that God is searching to look for, for you to use for the kingdom work. There's a talent in every one of us in here. And guess what? We all have treasures. You may say, well, I don't have much treasures, but I got news for you. Every single person in here has treasures. Now, what we do with them is what God is looking at. How do we want to do this? How do we want to share? How do we want to do this? So I say to you today, we need to be thankful, truly thankful to God for his goodness and how he is. He supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Everything that we, we need, he has. He has an answer to everything. There is not anything you will go through that does not have an answer in this book right here. That's the God we serve. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Plan to join us for a live service every Sunday morning at 1030. Remember, at the sanctuary, you have a safe place.